we also welcome those who are watching today's Mass on video. We thank you uh, for being present, and before I begin today's Mass, I would also like to let you know that immediately after the Mass, I will be traveling to Lowell uh, to celebrate Holy Mass for the uh, parish of St. Casimir, uh, while their pastor, Father Tennis, is uh, in uh, two months of, if you will, clergy boot camp. Uh, he is uh, preparing himself uh, uh, with his basic training uh, for the chaplaincy uh, of the uh, United States Army, and he's in chaplaincy school even now. I'd also like to remind everybody that immediately after the Mass, we are having cake and coffee uh, downstairs. Uh, we invite you to be a part of that. And also that after the Mass, if you would like to receive communion, please come to the Blessed Mother's side of the uh, sanctuary. And uh, I will Mass and I will give everybody communion, uh, cleansing my hands as I do so. Uh, but during the Mass today, we will say the act of spiritual communion. Uh, where we would normally take the communion. And one final announcement. I was asked to read this by the family. So I would like to uh, read the following. We apologize that we do not have the strength to attend Mass with you today. We are thankful for the love and support we have received from you. We are hoping that you can attend Leslie's Mass this Saturday at 11 a.m. You, you are our parish family, and having you present would be a blessing and an honor for us and for Leslie. And it said, it's signed, God bless Brian, Noah, and Nathan do places. Now, we've already announced it, but in case you didn't know, Nathan, who is one of our altar servers, Ryan, who is on our parish committee, Nathan's brother Noah, uh, they lost their mother this week uh, to breast cancer. And uh, she was 53 years old. And uh, so now these uh, young men uh, and their father have to continue through life. Uh, and uh, they invite you to be a part of uh, the Holy Mass, the Resurrection Mass, uh, which we which will be followed. The, ma the Mass will be here, and it will be followed by a uh, by the uh, uh, service at Mount Carmel uh, Cemetery. So uh, you are all invited by the family to be here for the Mass this Saturday. It will be at eleven o'clock. Now, having said all that, let us begin today's Holy Mass as we begin all good things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, today we hear Jesus' invitation uh, to find Him in peace and rest. We all need comfort. We all need rest. We all need peace. Where do you look for these things? Let us pray today for the wisdom to look to God for what we need, for the courage to spend time by ourselves, offering to God what we are afraid to face alone. And now please make a quiet examination of your conscience at this time, and with the sorrow in your heart for those sins which you have committed, and with the full resolve to sin no more, confess your sins quietly at this time, God. And now please say the second form of the Wikipedia with me. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the 
presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. As a penance for today's confession, I would ask you to please uh, keep in your prayers during this week the Duplacis family uh, so that they may be strengthened in this time of loss. And uh, please do this not only as a, a penance for today's confession, but also as a corporal act of mercy, pray for those who are uh, grieving. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority best within me, I do absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who again renew us, show us your mercy, Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Indeed, the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart.
fruit worthy of your labor and keep us fit for the coming harvest who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. He answered, 
to you has been given a knowledge of the mysteries of the reign of God, but it has not been given to the others. To the man who has, more will be given until he grows rich. The man who has not will lose what little he has. I use parables when I speak to them because they look, but do not see. They listen, but do not hear or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, Listen as you will, you shall not understand. Look intently as you will, you shall not see. Sluggish indeed is this people's heart. They have scarcely heard with their ears, they have firmly closed their eyes. Otherwise, if they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn back to me, and I shall heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and blessed are your ears, because they hear. I assure you, many a prophet and many a saint longed to see what you see, but did not see it, to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Mark well then the parable of the sower. The seed along the path is the man who hears the message about God's reign without understanding it. The evil one approaches him to steal away what was sown in his mind. The seed that fell on patches of rock is the man who hears the word and at first receives it with joy, but he has no roots, so he lasts only for a time. When some setback or persecution involving the message occurs, he soon falters. What was sown among briars is the man who keep, is the, the man hears the message, but then worldly anxiety and the word of money choke it off. Such a one produces no evil. But what was sown on good soil is the man who hears the message and takes it in. He it is who bears a fruit, fruit a yield of a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Because I think, again, there's things that we overlook. 
and it's not a big deal, but it says in the very first part of the gospel, the very first sentence, Jesus on leaving the house on a certain day sat down by the lake shore. And crowds gathered around him and he had to get into a boat and he was teaching. I want you to think about that. Now, we have this image, right, from reading and hearing uh, the gospel, reading it, hearing it proclaimed on Sundays, that Je Jesus was always on this journey. He was always traveling for three years. He was continuous. In fact, uh, if, you know, if we didn't realize that he started his missionary work about the age 30, well, we would think that man, right from you know the very birth, when he, when his dad took him and his mother, and they went to Egypt, right from that time, he was just traveling and traveling. And uh, that's not so. That's not so. Jesus, to a certain extent, very led a very human life. And in fact, he could be like you could say that he was like the person who has a, a place at the Hamptons, right? So he gets up in the morning, uh, the person who has, the, why do they go to the Hamptons? Because they want to be by the what? By the water. And so Jesus, because he is in Capernaum now, well, he goes to the lake shore. You know, he may fish or he may just go to, to as it said in today's gospel, he went there to sit by the lake shore. And all of a sudden, boom, the crowds came on him, and uh, he couldn't sit there anymore. It's what happened, I guess that's, you know, when you're, when you're, a, uh, when you're a personality, right, it's hot, kind of hard to go into public areas because everybody starts crowding around you, right? Uh, especially today, it's all about movie stars, right? But, uh, <clears throat> but in Jesus' time, he was a rock star. He was healing people, he was doing all this stuff, so... He would just want to go out by the lake and sit down and maybe contemplate, you know, say a prayer, whatever. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it because the people came. So I just wanted to point that out, that Jesus was living a normal life until he was about 30. And then after that, even when he tried, it just didn't work. But then he had to be about his father's business. So uh, again, even in this even in this very placid setting of Jesus trying to sit by the lake shore, we hear the great parable of the sower and the seeds. It comes from this type of a situation. But let me go back. I wanted to talk to you today about the first lesson. And that's from the book of Isaiah the prophet. And I'll just read it over for you again, very quickly. Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there, that means back up to heaven, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to him who sows and bread to him who eats, so my word be that goes be, be that goes from be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to be void but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. Now, the gospel talks about the sower and the seed, right? And here in Isaiah, we're hearing about the, the uh, farmer who uh, goes out and, you know, uh, as, or the, the image that, G, that Isaiah makes of God being the farmer, farmer who, uh, who uh, uh, waters the ground, right? Takes care of the earth, and makes it fertile and fruitful. In the very end, the very end of this passage, it says, the, the, that which is sown, which is the word of God, it shall not return to me void. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. Sometimes, and I have to confess, sometimes when I preach, I wonder if I'm preaching to the angels and the saints and the choir of heaven because it seems like everything I'm saying, it's not getting through. Have you ever had, I mean, 
all of you that are parents, did you ever have those moments with your children? You're, you're talking to them, you're preaching to them, and hey, it's just not getting through. And you get frustrated because you want to do what is best for your children and you're talking to them and it's like in one ear, out the other. With the Word of God, sometimes it can seem that way too. We as, we as a church and we as Christian people, we live our lives, we try to share the Christian message with our friends, our families, our loved ones, uh, the people that we work with, the people that we recreate with, uh, young people who are in school and trying to share the message of God's Word, and it's like, get away from me. I don't want to hear that. And you just sit there and you go, wow, this is so frustrating. Here I'm trying to share something that's really important and they don't want to hear it. It's, it's like I'm just blowing smoke. I'm, I'm talking to the wall. I'm talking to nobody. Or in, what is it, about 20 years, I'm talking to the hand. Right? Because the hand goes up and says, stop talking. I'm talking to the hand. But today's first reading tells us that it's not in vain. That God's going to take whatever we're doing and however that word is being proclaimed, because it's not us that's doing the proclaiming, it's God who's doing the proclaiming through us. We're only His instruments. We're sharing a message that God is putting in our hearts to share. Just, just very similarly to the prophets of the Old Testament. You know, Isaiah isn't just saying, well, I think I'm going to say this today. Isaiah would be told by God, you know, Isaiah, you're going to say this. And if you didn't do it, well, you know, there were problems. Remember the story of Jonah, who wasn't going to go and tell the people in Nineveh what they were supposed to hear? And what happened to Jonah? And finally he did it, and he goes, well, maybe I'll just see the city destroyed. That would be cool. And God says, no, they heard your message. It was fruitful, and I'm not going to destroy the city. And Jonah got mad. And he walked away and sat under a tree in the desert. And then the tree dried up, and Jonah just got madder and madder. But God's will will always be accomplished. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't allow for anything to happen that he is that he is blessing that's going to go away unfruitful. So that's a good message for us, especially at times like now when, you, when you're when you're looking around, and you're saying, or I'll look back there and I see three containers of diapers, and we have until the 26 to collect diapers, and I'm looking at that and I'm going. I hope that by the 26th, that's not all the diapers we're going to have. Because there's, you know, young families, young single women in, in the community of Manchester, they need diapers for their kids. And they can't afford them. So I keep, you know, we talk about diapers, we put them out, and then you sit there and go, oh Lord, but I know, I know that God is going to bless this. Because it comes from God. And it's a call for us to do God's will. We, when we proclaim the message, when we share what God is giving us to share, it never is wasted. Everything that you do for God in His name, following His words, is never wasted. Now, if you're doing it on your own, if it's your own idea, uh, maybe it ain't going to work out that well. But if you're following the Scripture and doing what God is calling you to do, then, as it says here, it shall not return to me void. But the Word, your speaking, shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. So, even when it feels like you could be discouraged in your faith, don't be. Even when it looks like nothing's happening right, don't believe it. 
Because God's hand is in all that we do in His name. And as long as we're doing it in His name, He's going to bless it. We may not see that blessing. Like, I, like I've said before, I'd love to see thousands of people here in Holy Trinity Cathedral for Mass on Sunday. It's not happening right now. But I firmly believe that God is going to bless this parish and it's going to be that per it's going to serve that purpose for which God wants. And it may not be having thousands of people in the cathedral, but what it may be is this cathedral and all of you people going out there and touching thousands of others for God in a way that blesses them, that they grow closer to God. You are the sowers. It's not just the clergy, it's all of us are the sowers. And if we sow the seed of God, don't worry about if you don't see immediate results. Because don't even worry if it seems like this is all for nothing. It's not for nothing. It's not void. It has a purpose and God will accomplish His purpose through the work that we do. Again, that last line of Isaiah, I think it's so important. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us rise and let us together proclaim the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds with the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken from the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come.
drives. But as for me, I walk in my integrity and be me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground with great congregation. I will bless the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive this offering of the Holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they whose memory be on our earth receive us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty. Amen. Heavenly Father, we set bread and wine before you as a sign that we are yours and that our love for you is real. Transform us by the power of your word to rejoice in our new life, to serve our brothers and sisters, and to praise your holy name. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread to his holy and venerable hands, and then having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his Almighty Father, who you thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking these excellent chalice in whose holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and His blessed passion, resurrection, and His glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty, from your own gifts and presents, a pure offering, a holy offering, and a immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your Joseph and Abel, Sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. We especially remember the soul of Leslie in places. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant and pray a place of refreshment, life, and peace to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some heart and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lies tabernacle after their divine master merit and eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and
Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, you are down our light to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, for the love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. May it may, may, may be at your willing servant, uh, through this communion, may your willing servant, uh, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May the last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this, who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. And now, let us together offer the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Shall I return to the Lord for the graces He has given me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I praise the Lord.